reminder of the age of the bush ranger. I went there, had a look, picked up a piece of iron and straight away thought, this is something special. This is the first and only time a television crew will be allowed to visit the old blacksmith's forge that Darren discovered just a few weeks back. He's keeping the exact location secret. It's been widely acknowledged that Joe Byrne's armour was made in the Woolshed Valley by a blacksmith, um, Charlie Knight, and his associate, a fellow called Thomas Stroyan. So here we are. This is it. This is it. This is the side of the forge. You can Fantastic. see the bricks here on the ground spread around. They've just fallen from where they originally stood. And, um, of course, they were handmade bricks. They've obviously got them from somewhere, made a forge here, and then produced from the forge some of the iron, Joe Burns' armour in particular. The forge had been covered by trees, but bushfires in 2003 left the area largely exposed, allowing Darren to make this stunning find, what appears to be an offcut from a suit of armour. What did you think when you found that right here? I picked it up, I looked at the piece of iron, and I thought to myself, that's a piece of armour. There was no doubt in my mind at that time immediately there was little or no doubt you must have been pinching yourself i went home and had a stiff drink yes <laughs> don't blame you yes i was very very surprised um that it was still here after all that time after 125 or more years 126 years that something like this would still be just left in the bush when people talk of cali country this is what they're talking about just up there on that hill is cali's caves and just over there is where joe byrne used to live Normally history is something you think about in your mind or you read about in books, but right here, you can literally hold it in your hand. Joe Byrne's actual armour is in private hands, stored in a bank vault in Canberra. But the Benella Museum has an exact replica made using a latex cast. Darren wanted to check his bit of iron against the replica, and incredibly it was a perfect fit. Even the grooves and angles matched up. They fit beautifully. They do. Look, it actually goes right up along there, just yeah. right. It is so close. I would... I don't think there's any doubt at all that this piece of iron is the bottom of this piece of armour. Yeah. And there's certainly no doubt in local historian Neil McWalter's mind, who was on hand to check the iron offcut. It's a perfect fit. No doubt it uh, belongs to the, this suit of armour. Darren will be comparing the found iron with the real suit of armour in the next few weeks and he's already begun securing the other items at the site. I'm very, very keen to ensure the integrity of this site, to make sure that it's properly documented and the items are kept together as a collective. And locals are also keen to get Darren back on site and back to work, digging up a little more history. It's unreal. All we've got to do is get Darren to find the other half. Unlike gold, you just can't put a figure question about the armour is how was it made? Was it made by a professional blacksmith or by the amateur Kelly gang out in the bush? In Glen Rowan, almost everybody seems to think it was made by a blacksmith. Oh, it was definitely made by blacksmiths in some fairly discreet locations. Though. Well, they couldn't really do it in the public gaze, could they? <laughs> you couldn't get it hot enough out in the bush to make it. You had to do it at a proper forge. They're backed up by the famous Kelly historian, Ian Jones. I'd be very surprised if anything came out that suggested it wasn't made by an expert blacksmith. I mean, you look at it, it is a beautiful artifact. We only found one man who thought different. His name is Ned. He believes his great-grandfather helped make the armour and it was done out in the bush. My great-grandfather was Ned's first cousin and the story that's come down through my line is that they shaped it on a, on a stringy bark log. I like had the thing in the water to dull the sound and they made a, a, a bush, bush forge and they went to work on it. Everyone does seem to agree that the armour was made from steel ploughshares like these, taken from neighbouring farms or donated to the Kellys by their supporters. But the key to finding out who made the armour lies in the temperature that the metal was heated to. A professional blacksmith uses a charcoal fire and bellows to heat the steel to yellow hot. That's over 1,000 degrees Celsius before shaping it. A normal bush fire has a much lower temperature and would only be able to get the metal to cherry red or 750 degrees. At this temperature, it's a lot harder to shape. 
So can science finally prove how the armour was made? The next morning, the armour is dismantled, ready for its journey down to the nuclear reactor in Sydney to solve the puzzle. From his birthplace here in Glen Rowan up to Lucas Heights. And there what we're going to try and do is find out just how he was made, what he's made out of. Let him tell his story. To Rupert, the armour is part of the family. For him, the quest to discover how it was made is driven not only by personal curiosity, but also the desire to bring its story alive for the people of Australia. But you can't just stick an object on a stand, no matter how important it 